During this time of Lent, we are focusing on the covenant of baptism. Now I ask you, what is baptism? Is it just a ceremony where we have holy water splashed over our heads and marked with the sign of the cross? I wake up. I haven't put you to sleep yet. And then a bunch of current promises made on our behalf. Because we were probably too young to answer ourselves. I think not. What is the real reason for baptism, I wonder? Well, I looked it up in the Bible. And in John 3, I found the answer. Nicodemus asked Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Now this was very disconcerting to Nicodemus, as I'm sure it would be to us as well. How can you be born again when you have already been born? Jesus answered this by saying, Very truly, I tell no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. And now becomes clarified. To be allowed into the kingdom of God our spirits have to be cleansed with holy water. And we have to follow the teachings of our Lord. These teachings are asked of us during baptism in the form of questions. And we answer the questions with, I will, with God's help. And it's not at our baptism alone, but every baptism that we attend, that tends to make me believe that no matter how perfect we think we are, we are going to make mistakes, and God knows that, and He is willing to help. This brings up a memory of when I was working. Some of you know that before I retired, I worked in all phases of the elevator industry. In installation, service, adjusting, maintenance, you have it. And on one particular job, I was adjusting the elevators that other people had installed. Adjusting means going over the elevators, correcting any problems I might find, getting the elevators up to speed, and then the elevators are working properly and have a government inspection. Through the course of my time there, if I found something wrong, I would ask the foreman who did that particular part of the job, could he have the fellow who did come over so I could show him what was wrong, so he would not do it that way again. Every time I ask the foreman, would you say that Joe did that? He would say that Joe did that, but he has left the job. After a few episode, episodes of this, I got a little exasperated. And I told the foreman that he should have Joe in all his jobs. He asked why. I told him, I believe that if you're a worker, you're going to make some mistakes. And by the amount of mistakes Joe made, he must be the only one of this crew that did any work. <laughs> the foreman didn't talk to me for a long while. <laughs> I tend to think, not that I'm comparing myself to God, but this is how God works. He lets you work on your own, and He expects us to make mistakes. But He is there for us if He asks for His help. And He wants us to follow His teachings and be a good Christian. Throughout our lives, repent for our mistakes, and correct our, our mistakes. God gave us the tools and the freedom to use these, those tools. He sent His Son Jesus to reinforce us in His teachings and to show us His love for us. The question that is up for discussion from our baptism vows this week is, Will you proclaim by word and examples the good news of God in Christ? When you entered this morning, you received a piece of paper with the question on. The question, how will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? 
After the service, we actually deposited that piece of paper and to put the crops in the box. Thank you very much.